Good morning to all of you. This is uh, Ramakrishna from Kone Lakshmi University delivering the series of lectures on heat transfer. Today we will take up the topic on radiation. We have already seen that radiation is another mode of heat transfer where the heat travels through electromagnetic waves. It doesn't require any medium and the fundamental law governing the radiation as Stephen Boltzmann law in the introductory chapter. Details of those radiation and how it occurs and what are the fundamentals and how to define different properties. Then finally radiation heat exchange between two bodies is that what we have to learn under this chapter radiation. So this is divided into two parts. The first part we will look into the fundamentals of radiation which deals with different properties and laws. So at the end of this session a student will be able to understand what are the different ranges of wavelengths characterizing different waves with reference to electromagnetic spectrum and what is thermal radiation and you will be able to understand the properties like reflectivity, transmittivity and absorptivity and you will be able to understand the concept of ideal black body and we will define radiation intensity and the concept of radiation intensity in measuring the radiation heat exchange and you will understand the basic class of radiation and their significance and through one of the important law, Wien's displacement law, we will come to know the importance of greenhouse effect. So this is what we are going to take up. Most of the students might have gone through these fundamentals of radiation or properties and different laws of radiation at their plus two level itself, that is before undergraduation intermediate level itself. So anyhow, from engineering perspective, let us see the radiation properties. Radiation is the third mode of heat transfer where the transfer of energy takes place from bodies having temperature greater than 0 Kelvin in the form of electromagnetic waves. So all material bodies having temperature greater than 0 Kelvin continuously emit energy in the form of electromagnetic waves and we call it as radiation. For example, the fire here is at 900 degrees centigrade. It emits radiant energy. And the person here is at 30 degrees centigrade, so he will also continuously emit radiant energy. The air in between the fire and person is also at a temperature greater than 0 Kelvin, so it will also continuously emit energy in the form of electromagnetic waves. <clears throat> so the energy emitted by the fire will go and fall on the body and the remaining into the atmospheric air and the energy emitted by this person partly will fall on fire and the remaining to the environment and the energy emitted by air will reach both the body as well as the fire. occurs between 
all the three assuming that only three bodies are existing in this space they interact radiation and we receive the energy from the sun by means of radiation vacuum exists between the sun and the earth even through that vacuum radiation energy travels so therefore the radiation heat transfer requires no medium and unlike conduction and convection the heat transfer by means of radiation can occur between two bodies say the fire and person even though when they are separated by a medium colder than both the air is at temperature less than the person temperature and the fire temperature but still they exchange heat by means of radiation conduction and convection requires temperature difference for the flow of energy from one point to another point or one medium to other medium whereas in radiation temperature difference is not the factor it is the temperature of an individual body which emits energy Hello, Mr. Sridhar. Sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Can I start now? Yes, sir. I will. I will start from where I have started. Okay, sir. Okay. Will it be all right? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. So, therefore, in conduction and convection, it requires temperature difference for the transfer of heat energy. Whereas in radiation, all material bodies by virtue of the temperature greater than 0 Kelvin, they continuously emit energy. Not only the energy we receive from the sun is through vacuum which doesn't require any medium, but it comes and reaches the earth by passing through cold air layers at high altitudes. So that is what is illustrated here even though the body and the fire are separated by a cold medium air radiation heat transfer can pass through or you can have exchange of heat transfer between two days let us imagine there is a object 
hot body at temperature Ts and the temperature of this body is greater than the surroundings and it is kept in vacuum. So therefore, even this body is in vacuum, it exchanges heat with the surroundings by means of radiation. Due to vacuum, there is no conduction or convection, still the body exchanges heat with the surroundings by means of radiation and it gets cooled. So the solid gets cooled due to emission of thermal radiation from the surface of it. What is this radiation basically? Accelerated charges are changing electric currents that gives rise to electric and magnetic fields. And these moving fields are called electromagnetic waves or electromagnetic radiation. So when there is a change in electronic configuration of the atoms or molecules, when the electrons are moving from one level, one Fermi level to the other Fermi level, due to the difference in energy of each and every Fermi level, they release the balance energy or they absorb the balance energy and that kind of energy emitted by a matter as a result of changes in electronic configuration of atoms or molecules is known as electromagnetic radiation. The electromagnetic radiation is characterized by its frequency nu and its wavelength lambda and the lambda wavelength of those waves, electromagnetic radiation waves is equal to C by nu where C is the speed of propagation of wave in that medium and the C value depends on the index of refraction and the velocity of light. So C is equal to C naught by N, where C naught is the velocity of light in vacuum and N is the index of refraction. For most of the gases and air, the index of refraction is 1, so C is equal to C naught. Whereas for other materials like glass, it is 1.5 and for water it is 1.33. So by knowing the index n, the speed of propagation of a wave and from which you can determine the, the frequency of the waves. The lambda and c depend on the medium through which the wave travels whereas nu is independent of the medium and it only depends on the source. While heat energy is being transferred from a body to another body by means of radiation, these bodies by virtue of their high temperature, they emit energy in the form of electromagnetic waves and these waves carry energy in terms of C nu equal to C by lambda, so energy of a photon is H C by lambda, where H is Planck's constant 6.625 into 10 power minus 34 joule seconds. And the energy of photon, you can see from this relation, is inversely proportional to its wavelength. So therefore, Shorter wavelength radiation possess large energies. 
for example, gamma rays and X rays are having very short wavelength. So therefore, we try to avoid these kind of rays having high energy because they are highly destructive. Let us have a look at the overall electromagnetic spectrum wherein different kinds of waves having a range of wavelengths from 10 cube meters to 10 power minus 12 meters. This electromagnetic spectrum includes gamma rays, X-rays, ultraviolet radiation, visible light, infrared radiation, thermal radiation, a part of it, microwaves and radio waves, etc. The gamma rays are produced by nuclear reactions and X-rays are by the bombardment of metals with high energy electrons and microwaves are produced by a special type of electron tubes called clustrons and magnetrons and radio waves are generated due to excitation of some crystals by making alternating current flow through electric conductors. You, you can see here the gamma rays and X-rays are having very short wavelength which is of great interest to nuclear engineers while the microwaves and radio waves having relatively large wavelength are of interest to engineers, particularly electrical engineers. And out of this, the thermal radiation, the one which is pertinent to heat transfer, due to energy transition of molecules, atoms and electrons of a substance. Therefore, we can say that all bodies emit radiation when their temperature is greater than 0 Kelvin. So therefore, Everything surrounding us, the computer, our body, the tables, chairs, fan, walls, etc. By virtue of the temperature greater than 0 Kelvin, constantly emit and absorbs radiation. The energy coming from the sun by means of radiation, it's known as solar radiation and it is in the wavelength band of 0.3 to 3 micrometers. And out of this 0.3 to 3 micrometers, if you carefully observe, the visible spectrum, only the waves from 0.4 micrometers to 0.7 micrometers, you can see the figure here, out of 10 to the power minus 3 to 10 power minus 6 to 10 power plus 6 micrometers wavelength, only 0.4 to 0.7 micrometer wavelength waves are visible to our naked eye. 
you can see out of the entire long band the visible rays are only falling in this small range and that visible spectrum is again classified based on the color our naked eye sense system as violet, blue, green, yellow, orange and red depending upon the wavelengths 0.4 to 0.44 etc. So the solar radiation having a bandwidth of 0.3 to 3 micrometers you can see that half of it is in the visible range roughly and the remaining half falls under ultraviolet and infrared range. However, in heat transfer we are interested in energy emitted by body due to their temperature and that is called thermal radiation. And this thermal radiation extends from about 0.1 to 100 micrometers. And this includes the entire visible and infrared as well as a portion of ultraviolet radiation. You can have a look at this. A more elaborative picture in which the visible light roughly varies between 0.4 to 0.76 micrometers this one which is not different electromagnetic radiation but the difference is when light falls on our eye it creates a sensation of seeing in human eye and it covers the band from 0.4 to 0.76 micrometers. The ultraviolet radiation includes the wavelengths between 0.01 to 0.4 micrometers. These ultraviolet rays are to be avoided to the extent possible since they kill microorganisms and cause diseases to human beings and other living things when they are exposed to too much to ultraviolet radiation. And if you observe the solar radiation roughly contains 12 percent of this ultraviolet waves. So if these 12 percent of ultraviolet waves reach our earth and if the human beings are exposed to them they cause serious damage. Luckily the ozone layer in the atmosphere arrest the entry of ultraviolet rays into the onto the earth because it is opaque for ultraviolet rays the ozone layer and that is where now the environmentals are raising their voice against ozone layer depletion due to some chemical substances particularly freon based refrigerants. So that is the reason why most of the refrigerants are now replaced with R134 like those which are non which are having very low ozone depleting potential. 
But anyhow, sometimes this ultraviolet radiation is artificially produced for medicinal purpose to kill the bacteria and for other reasons. And microwave utilize electromagnetic radiation by generating them in cubes called magnetrons. They are roughly from 10 square to 10 power 5 micrometers. And very suitable for use in cooking since the microwaves are reflected by metals but transmitted by the glass and plastics and they are absorbed by water molecules because most of the food contains water molecules. These microwaves will get absorbed and then cooking occurs. And radars, cordless tele and then these televisions, etc. They they use the radio waves falling in this uh, region, radio waves here, you can see the microwave and radio waves etc. depending upon, so this spectrum explains different applications with reference to the wavelength of waves. Now if you look at the phenomena of radiation, the electrons, atoms and molecules of all solids and liquids, when the temperature is above 0 Kelvin, they are in continuous motion and thus the radiation is constantly emitted and these absorbed or transmitted through the entire volume of the matter. So it is the entire volume. So therefore, strictly speaking, radiation is a volumetric phenomena. However, for non-transparent objects, let's wood, rocks, etc. The radiation emitted by the interior part cannot reach the surface and the radiation incident on such bodies is usually absorbed within a few microns from the surface only. Therefore, for solids or liquids, it is treated only as a surface phenomena. So the emission process is of two nature is categorized into two parts volumetric phenomena and surface phenomena but mostly as long as far as solids or liquids is concerned the radiation is considered as a surface phenomena because the radiation emitted by the interior parts cannot reach the surface. <clears throat> if you look at the radiation, thermal radiation, it is divided into two types. One is spectral distribution and other one is directional distribution. The spectral distribution depends on the wavelength of the waves and is also known as monochromatic radiation emission. At a particular wavelength, what is the radiation emission? And that kind of emitted radiation 
which is continuous non-uniform distribution of monochromatic components is called spectral distribution. It depends on the nature of the emitting surface and also on the temperature of the emitting surface. Whereas directional distribution if you see it is distributed in all directions with reference to an angle theta. With reference to this directional distribution again, this kind of distribution is called non-uniform directional distribution which happens in black bodies. Whereas, sorry, in case of real bodies, whereas in a black body, the distribution is uniform and it represents almost a hemisphere. Not this kind of oval shape, if you draw these arrows, you will get a hemisphere. So that is the reason why we say a black body is a perfect emitter as well as a perfect absorber of radiation. And it emits energy uniform in all directions and hence a black body is a diffuse emitter. We will see later that. Diffuse means independent of uh, direction. Like this. Radiation is reflected equally in all directions, independent of direction. That is called diffuse radiation. However, reflectivity is inherently bidirectional. Whenever an incident ray falls on a surface, it gets reflected. If it is a smooth side surface like mirror, the angle of incidence and angle of reflection is equal. And that kind of reflectivity is where the angle of refraction is equal to angle of incidence and it's known as a specular surface. With reference to the radiation, we define a smooth surface as one whose roughness is smaller than the wavelength of incident radiation. Surfaces will have some roughness and when that roughness is smaller than the wavelength of incident radiation we call it as a specular surface and a diffuse surface is that which reflects the radiation equally in all directions. Now let us go to the properties of uh, the radiation. Consider a semi-transparent material thick glass on which energy incident is g watt per meter square. Part of the energy will pass through it called transmitted and a part of that energy gets reflected and a part of it may be absorbed. So we say absorbitivity is the fraction of irradiation, total amount of radiation coming and falling on this body in all directions is called irradiation absorbed by the surface and reflectivity rho is the fraction of irradiation reflected by the surface. Transmittivity is the fraction of irradiation transmitted by the surface. So if you make energy balance, the total irradiation is equal to absorbed amount, reflected amount and the transmitted amount. So we define absorbitivity as the amount of energy absorbed by the total amount, reflectivity as the amount of energy reflected to the top total amount 
transmittivity as the total amount of energy transmitted to that of total amount incident on it. The values of absorptivity, reflectivity and transmittivity lies between 0 and 1. Now divide this energy balance equation with G. So you will get 1 and G absorbed by G is nothing but absorptivity. The reflectivity by total amount is called reflectivity. Transmittivity by G is called transmittivity. Trans transferred energy divided by this. So therefore, we will get an equation alpha plus rho plus tau is equal to 1. So no value can be greater than 1 and if any one of these values is 1, any one of these properties is equal to 1, other properties automatically will become 0. Alpha, rho and tau, absorptivity, reflectivity and transmittivity are always positive and lies between 0 and 1. A non-reflecting surface, reflectivity is 0, therefore alpha B is 1. And for a perfect white body, reflectivity is 1 and hence alpha is 0 and tau is 0. For a opaque surface like solids, no transmittivity, therefore absorptivity plus reflectivity should be equal to 1. For a trans Different surface like clean glass or air gases, transmittivity is 1, therefore their absorptivity and reflectivity is 0. Alpha equal to 1, absorptivity 1, perfect absorber represents a perfectly black surface. And these definitions are for total hemispherical properties. Since G represents the radiation flux incident on the surface, from all the directions, we are calling it as irradiation over the hemispherical space and over all wavelengths. If you take into account the alpha or rho or tau, considering only the absorbed radiation at a particular wavelength and incident radiation total at that particular wavelength, we have to call this as monochromatic absorptivity, alpha suffix lambda. Similarly, monochromatic reflectivity, reflectivity of rays pertaining to that particular wavelength. Similarly, monochromatic transmittivity, tau lambda. So we can see here, when medium is opaque to the incident radiation, opaque solid, the amount of energy transmitted becomes zero and it is only absorption and reflection surface phenomena. It is only a surface phenomena. It absorbs and reflects. Absorption has the effect of increasing the internal thermal energy of the medium. Now let us have some idea about the perception of color. When surface temperature is less than 1000 Kelvin, Emission is in infrared region and it cannot be seen by eye. The color is due to selective reflection and absorption of the visual portion of the radiation that is incident from the sun or an artificial source of light we have seen the visible spectrum. For example, a leaf appears in green color because of chlorophyll which absorbs all the colors but reflects green color. Hence, to our naked eye, it looks in green color. Color of the surface is not an indicator of overall capacity of an absorber or reflector since much of the irradiation may be in the infrared region. Now, what is a black body? From the perception of color, if it looks in black color, you should not take it as a black body. Color has nothing to do to define radiation black. Maybe the mouse is in black color. It doesn't mean the mouse is a black body. 
a body at an absolute temperature above zero emits radiation in all directions over a wide range of wavelengths. And the amount of energy emitted by a surface depends on material of the body, condition of its surface, surface temperature. Now take an ideal case. The maximum amount of radiation that can be emitted by a surface at a given temperature is for black body. So therefore, a black body is a perfect emitter as well as a perfect absorber, which is serves as a standard against which all radiation properties of real surfaces are compared. A black body is that which absorbs all instant radiation regardless of wavelength and direction. And for a prescribed temperature and wavelength, no surface can emit more energy than a black body. Although the radiation emitted by a black body is a function of wavelength and temperature, it is independent of direction. Equally, it emits energy in all directions, uniformly. That is why the black body is called a diffuse emitter. So with reference to this black body only, see for example, <clears throat> a leaf appears green to our eye because that leaf reflects green color and absorbs all the remaining colors. Suppose a body absorbs all the colors falling in the range, violet, indigo, blue, yellow, green, orange, red, it appears to our eye in black color but it would have been reflecting the remaining rays falling in the ultraviolet region, infrared region, etc., etc., which we cannot visualize and hence the body appears to us in black color. That is only a black color body, not a black body. A radiation black body means, please note, the one which absorbs all the radiation all the waves in the electromagnetic spectrum ranging from 10 power minus 6 micrometers to 10 power 6 micrometers. So with reference to such a body which is having complete absorption and complete emission, the Stephen Boltzmann has defined the law. The radiation energy emitted by a black body per unit time and per unit area is directly proportional to fourth power of its absolute temperature. So emitting power of a black body is sigma t to the power 4. Sigma is the Stephen Boltzmann constant. And this law gives the total black body emissive power which is the sum of radiation emitted over all, over all the waves. So let us have quickly a look at distinction between an idealized black body and a black surface which is appearing to our naked eye in black color. Any surface that absorbs light, visible portion, would appear black into the eye and the surface that reflects completely would appear white. Considering that visible radiation occupies a very narrow band, we can't make judgment about the blackness of a surface on the basis of visual observations. For example, snow and white paint reflect light and thus appear white, but they are not essentially white bodies. More or less, they are very close to black body since they strongly absorb all long wavelength radiation. A surface coated with lamp black paint approaches idealized black body behavior. Yeah. Another black body which closely resembles to its is a, a large cavity with small opening. You can see here a small opening such that the rays enter into this cavity gets undergoes multiple reflections. Eventually they will be absorbed by this key and nothing will come out. 
because nothing is coming out of this cavity and falling on our eye, you can't see it. So it absorbs all the radiations, energy, therefore it is an example for black body. If the surface of the cavity is at isothermal manner, that is say temperature T, the radiation emitted by the interior surface streams through the opening after undergoing multiple reflections and thus it has a diffusive nature also. You can see uniform distribution of energy. So this cavity acts as a perfect absorber as well as emitter and hence an example for black hole. In the radiation, to calculate the intensity of radiation, one should be familiar with a solid angle. For example, if you take a sector like this, this angle is called a plane angle and the DL is R D alpha or the angle D alpha is D L by R. This is shown with respect to a pizza, a sector cut with an angle alpha. And a solid angle is that which develops the frustum of a cone like this. And this is given by the area is dA by R square is d omega. And this omega is steridian, solid angle. And this d omega is dA n by R square. And this is the dA. And you can look here. In the what is and that piece, angle of which is represented by solid angle W. Now look at this. The emission of radiation from a differential area, DA1 here, into a solid angle D omega subtended by capital D cap A n at a point on D A 1. So with reference to this, we define D W is equal to D A n by R square. And these angles, theta is known as genith angle and this pi is known as azimuth angle. If all the surface emit radiation uniformly in direction, all directions, the emissive power would be sufficient to quantify radiation. Just EB you can use. And we need not worry about the intensity of radiation. But what happens is, For real surfaces, this is not the case. Therefore, we have to define the intensity and need to quantify the size of opening in a space. So therefore, when you look at this, this area DAN is nothing but with reference to r and d theta, the length is r d theta and the projection of this r sin theta with respect to that angle is r sin theta d phi. So therefore, the area is r sin theta d phi into r d theta which becomes r square sin theta d theta d phi. And we define dW as dA n by R square. So sin theta d theta d phi. And let us integrate and calculate the solid angle for a sphere. Theta varies from 0 to pi. And pi varies from 0 to 2 pi. And you will get the a n is 4 pi R square and that divided by r square will become 4 pi. So omega solid angle for a sphere 
with unit radius r equal to 1 is 4 pi. Differential solid angle d omega is given by dA cos alpha by r square where alpha is the angle between the normal to the surface and the direction of u in and thus dAn becomes dA for example a solid angle subtended by, subtended by 5 cm square plane surface when viewed from a point at a distance of 80 cm the omega value k by r square 7.81 into 10 power minus 4 steradians. But when you view it with an angle of 60 degrees then a n becomes a n cos 60 which is 2.5 cm square. So the solid angle in this case would become roughly half of it. And how to measure the intensity of emitted radiation? Let us consider the emission of radiation by a differential element dA1. The radiation is emitted in all directions and is proportional to the solid angle d omega subtended by the area dAn. And this radiation is also proportional to the radiating area dA1 which varies from a maximum of dA1 to dAn at the top directly above dA1 and to a minimum of 0 when dA1 is at the bottom. So the effective area of dA1 for emission in the direction of theta is the projection of dA1 on a plane normal to theta which is nothing but dA1 cos theta normal to theta the area projected dA1 cos theta. Hence the radiation intensity for emitted radiation is defined as at which radiation energy is emitted in the theta phi direction for unit area normal to this direction and for unit solid angle about this direction. So therefore, you can determine for a diffusely emitting surface the intensity of emitted radiation is independent of direction and thus IE is constant and you can find it by using the formula cos theta sin theta d theta d phi integrating theta from 0 to pi by pi 2 and g, pi value from 0 to 2 pi you will get pi. So therefore it leads to a simplification of energy emitted is equal to pi into IE. Here it is not 2 pi carefully observe it is pi because the emissive power follow carefully the emissive power is based on the actual surface area whereas the intensity of radiation depends on projected area for for a black body which is a diffuse emitter the EB becomes only pi IB not 2 pi IB projected area only we have to take. Let us see another property called radiosity. If there is an incident radiation G falling on it, a part of it is reflected and that is called reflected radiation. This surface by virtue of its own temperature emits some quantity of radiation and put together the energy leaving the surface is reflected portion plus emitted portion that is called radiosity. J. So J is equal to rho times G reflectivity part of incident radiation plus epsilon into EB where epsilon is the emissivity of the surface into black body EB. 
which is nothing but five times I emitted this radiation energy pi I E plus R. And let us have a look at incident radiation. What is this incident radiation? All surfaces emit radiation at the same time they receive radiation emitted or reflected by other surfaces also. Thus the intensity of radiation is defined as the rate at which radiation energy is incident from theta phi direction in this direction per unit area of the receiving surface normal to this direction and per unit solid angle above this direction. Therefore, G is equal to integral dG pi 0 to 2 pi theta 0 to pi t 2 i incident radiation cos theta sin theta d t d pi you will get pi i i watts per meter square. After the Stephen Boltzmann law, another important law in radiation is Lambert's cosine law. And this Lambert's cosine law is formulated to study the radiant energy distribution. It states that the intensity of radiation over the surface of this hemisphere varies as cosine of the angle between the normal the radiating surface and the line joining radiating surface to the point on the spherical surface. That is what we have seen earlier. The same thing when you do the double integration you will get Eb equal to pi Ib. This is called for actually Lambert's cosine law. This equation is applicable to diffuse surfaces only and states that the total emissive power of a diffuse surface is equal to pi times its radiation intensity. Next one is Planck's law of distribution or Planck's distributive law. This speaks about spectral distribution of black body emission given by the formula 2 h c naught square by lambda to the power 5 exponential h c naught by lambda k t to the power minus 1. h is the Planck's constant, k is the Boltzmann constant and c naught is the velocity of light and t is the absolute temperature of the body. And it shows that the energy emitted by a black surface varies in accordance with the wavelength, lambda, temperature and other surface characteristics. Since a black body is a diffuse emitter, the spectral emissive power can be obtained by using this formula and thereby parameters in this as 2 h c naught square lambda the power etc. where the 2 pi h Planck's constant etc. can be taken as all of these can combine together as another constant c1, c2 etc. and you will get the functional relationship E as a lambda and t. The same thing is presented in a graphical form and if you look at this graph, different uh, inferences we can draw are at any temperature there is no contribution by waves other than ultraviolet, visible light, infrared to the thermal radiation. The emitted radiation varies continuously with wavelength, continuously with wavelength. At any wavelength the magnitude of the radiation increases as temperature increases. The spectral region in which the radiation is concentrated depends on the temperature. Comparatively you can see more radiation appearing at shorter wavelengths. At shorter wavelengths, for example between these two you have a large amount. Between these two the amount is very, they involve large as the temperature increases. And significant fraction of radiation emitted by sun may be approximated by black body at 5800 Kelvin 
is in the visible region 0.392.77 micrometers. When temperature of a body is less than 800 Kelvin, emission is predominantly in the infrared region and is not visible to the eye unless they reflect light coming from other sources. And the next one is Wayne's displacement. It says that lambda maximum and temperature is then given by 2897.8 micrometer Kelvin. So it says that maximum spectral power is displaced to shorter wavelengths with increase in temperature as we have seen in Planck's distributive law. The solar radiation at temperature 5800 Kelvin will be with a shorter wavelength. The black body at 1000 Kelvin peak emission is 2.9 micrometers from this. And with increase in temperature, the shorter wavelengths become more prominent until eventually significant emission occurs over the entire visible spectrum. The tungsten filament lamp, which is around 2900, the lambda maximum becomes 1 micrometer, emits white light, although most of the emissions remains in infrared region. This wind's displacement law has got great applications with reference to greenhouse effect and the solar heat trapping applications. Let us have a quick look at this paragraph. The product is constant lambda maximum into T. Therefore, when temperature is high, lambda will be low. The radiation energy coming from the sun is at high temperature, so it is of low wavelength. The carbon dioxide covering the earth is opaque to low wavelength waves, so it will not allow, uh, sorry, it is transparent to low wavelength waves and opaque to longer wavelength waves. So it allows the direct solar radiation which is of low wavelength. The moment the long, the wavelength touch the earth's surface, it is partly absorbed and mostly reflected and this reflected energy is at lower temperature, hence of higher wavelength and carbon dioxide is opaque to higher wavelength waves. It will not allow the wavelength, the waves to pass through it, so they are re-reflected to the earth surface. And because of this, the earth temperature is protected. And this effect is called greenhouse effect and the atmosphere protects the globe by keeping it at higher temperature. In the absence of this carbon dioxide atmosphere, like other planets, we would be also experiencing either very high temperature or very cold temperatures. Similarly, to cultivate certain plants, flowers at cold places, they grow them in glass house because glass is also having the same kind of property like carbon dioxide. The glass is opaque to short wavelength waves and transparent for longer wavelength waves. So it permits the solar radiation to enter but it will not allow it to go back hence the energy gets trapped and it develops heat energy. This is a very important application in the utilization of solar energy by using glass covers on the solar water heaters, solar cookers, etc. And a glass house is also warmer in winter that is why most of the western countries where they want to minimize the heating load, they use most of the walls covered with glasses. Kirchhoff's law. This is another law which is useful to establish
another law which is useful to establish the relation between emissive power of a body to its absorbitivity. It states that under thermal equilibrium the ratio of a emissive power of a body to its absorbitivity is the same. So when it is in thermal equilibrium with environment we can say that E1 by alpha 1 equal to E2 by alpha 2 equal to E3 by alpha 3 is a constant equal to Eb by alpha b. Eb emissive power of a black body that is environment is a black body and alpha b absorbitivity of a black body is 1. Therefore, when it is 1 you will get Eb. So E1 by Eb is called emissivity which is equal to alpha 1. So therefore alpha 1 is E1 by Eb, alpha 2 is E2 by Eb, alpha 1 is equal to epsilon 1, alpha 2 equal to epsilon 2 etc. So therefore at thermal equilibrium the absorbitivity and emissivity of a body are equal. It is valid only when thermal equilibrium is maintained that too in an isothermal enclosure. It is also applicable for monochromatic radiation thus at a given temperature and wavelength alpha lambda is equal to epsilon lambda for when the surfaces are same. The surface emission of a real surfaces is also an important factor in the calculation of radiation heat energy. We are treating black body as an ideal emitter so therefore no surface can emit more radiation than a black body and black body is always chosen as a reference to calculate the maximum amount of emitting energy. So therefore with reference to the energy emitted by a black body the amount of energy emitted by a real surface if you take the ratio it is called emissivity radiation emitted by a real body to that of radiation emitted by a black body at the same temperature is known as emissivity. And if you calculate uh, if you draw the figure for emitted energy at a particular wavelength that is called spectral distribution and for a black body it is a smooth curve like this having maximum amount of energy and for a real body it fluctuates. When you smoothen it, it becomes a gray body. So comparison of a black body and real surface emissions you can see here spectral radiation emitted by a real surface and directional distribution etc. And this need not be diffuse always. It may vary. So how to calculate when you know the monochromatic irradiation? To determine the total irradiation just we have to integrate it between 0 to infinite wavelength limits g lambda d lambda you will get the total amount of irradiation. Generally irradiation interacts with a semi-transparent medium such as layer of a water or glass plate. If you look at the emissivity property, the real surface do not emit radiation in a perfectly diffuse manner and they often come close. The directional emissivity theta of a surface in the normal direction is representative of hemispherical emissivity of the surface. It is common practice to assume the surfaces to be diffusive emitters with an emissivity equal to the value in normal direction. So conductors if you see they have fairly between 45, 0 to 45 degrees constant emissivity and non-conductors over a wide range up to 75 they continuously vary. And the temperature dependence on the total normal emissivity for different materials is shown here, how they are varying. And typical ranges of emissivities for various materials like polished metal, metals, oxidized metals, carbon, vegetation, water, skin values, etc. For emissivity values are shown. So altogether with reference to that emissivity we can say the seized E versus lambda, the curve for a black body will be like this and for a real body is uneven one and for an actual surface it will be like this. Remember when we even out the actual surface 
with the respect to a gray surface, the total area under this curve should be same because the amount of energy remains same. So for a real surface, E versus E theta, epsilon theta is not constant, directional emissivity and monochromatic emissivity is also not constant. And for a diffuse surface, the directional emissivity is constant. And for a gray surface, monochromatic emissivity is constant. For a diffuse and gray surface, monochromatic emissivity and directional emissivity are constant. And for a black body, emissivity is equal to 1. So, emissivity of a metallic surface is generally small as low as 0.02 to 0.02 for highly polished gold and silver. When emissivity is low, as per Kirchhoff's law, absorptivity is low. When absorptivity is low, this being a solid, they have high reflectivity. That is why we will see gold and silver surfaces are always shining nature because they reflect major portion of the energy falling on. The presence of oxide layers may significantly increase the emissivity. Once an oxide layer is formed, the reflectivity of a metal decreases. Stainless steel has emissivity between 0 0.3 to 0 0.7 at 900 Kelvin, depending on whether it is polished or heavily oxidized. When it is polished, it will have low emissivity. When it is heavily oxidized, it will have high emissivity. Emissivity of non-conductors is comparatively large, generally more than 0.6. Emissivity of conductors increases with increasing temperature, however depends on the specific material, conductors may either increase or decrease with increase in temperature. Variation of normal emissivity with temperature is consistent with spectral distribution of both monochromatic and hemispherical emissivity. So this is with reference to the radiation and let us have a quick look at the concept questions. Uh, with answers which will briefly revise what we have done today. What is visible light and how does it differ from other forms of electromagnetic radiation? Visible light is a kind of electromagnetic wave whose wavelength varies between 0 0.4 to 0 0.76 micrometers and it differs from other forms in that it triggers the sensation of seeing in the human eye. What is thermal radiation and how does it differ from other forms of electromagnetic radiation? Thermal radiation is the limited radiation emitted as a result of vibrational and rotational motion of molecules, atoms and electrons of a substance which is nothing but by virtue of its temperature greater than 0 Kelvin and extends it about 0 0.1 to 100 micrometers. Unlike other forms, thermal radiation is emitted by but bodies by virtue of their temperature. Why is radiation usually treated as a surface phenomena? In opaque solids, it is treated as surface phenomena since only radiation emitted by the molecules in a very thin layer of body at the surface can escape the solid. Why do skiers get sunburned so easily? Because the snow reflects almost all of the visible and ultraviolet radiation the skin is expected to uh, expose it to this ultraviolet radiation both from the sun and from the snow. How does microwave cooking differ from conventional cooking? Microwaves in the range of very suitable for use in cooking as they are reflected by metals, transmitted by glass and plastics and absorbed by food molecules. Thus the electric energy converted to radiation in a microwave eventually becomes part of the internal energy of the food with no conduction and convection thermal resistance involved in conventional cooking whereas you have more amount of losses and because of the resistances the process is very slow. What is a black body? Does a black body actually exist? No. A black body is a perfect emitter and absorber of radiation and a black body does not actually exist. It is an idealized body that emits maximum amount of radiant energy that can be emitted by a surface at a given temperature. Define the properties emissivity, absorptivity and when are these two properties equal to each other. Emissivity is the ratio of radiation emitted by a real surface to that of radiation emitted by a black body and the fraction of energy absorbed to that of total incident energy is known as absorptivity. 
when the surface temperature is equal to the temperature of source of radiation that is under thermal equilibrium the total hemispherical emissivity of a surface temperature is equal to total hemispherical absorptivity of radiation coming from a black body at the same temperature indirectly it represents the Kirchhoff's law. Define the properties reflectivity, transmittivity and discuss different forms of reflection. We have already seen what is the reflectivity and transmittivity in spectral mirror like reflection the angle of reflection is equal to angle of incidence and in diffuse the radiation is reflected equally in all directions as in the case of a black body. What is a gray body? How does it differ from black body? And what is a diffuse gray surface? A body whose surface properties are independent of wavelength is a gray body. M epsilon lambda is constant. The emissivity of black body is 1 and the emissivity of gray body is between 0 and 1. What is greenhouse effect? Why is it a matter of great concern among atmospheric scientists? It is with relevance to the carbon dioxide atmosphere which is transparent to low wavelength waves and opaque for high wavelength waves causing trapping of solar energy and thereby a global warming takes place. Greenhouse effect is more the amount of carbon dioxide, more amount of energy gets trapped and thereby eventually global warming takes place. We can see the inside of a microwave during operation and do you think that the harmful microwave radiation might also be escaping? No, glass has transparent window and it is not transparent to the radiation which has wavelength greater than 3 micrometers. Therefore, because the microwaves are in the range of more than 3 micrometers, the harmful microwave radiation cannot escape from the glass doors. So, thank you very much. And this is the end of the fundamentals of radiation. And I advise the students to go through the textbook Heat and Mass Transfer by Yunus A. Sengel to give more clarity on this subject. But of course, as I said in the beginning of this chapter, fundamentals of radiation are the laws of radiation. Most of the students, they might have done it at their schooling level or intermediate level. So therefore, uh, I have made just rush it through the content. And in the next session, we will take up the engineering part uh, that is the radiation heat exchange between two bodies. Um, thank you very much.